Hey there, have you ever wondered what it would be like to run around slaying thousands of monsters without wearing pants? Well boy, have I got the game for you. This is Path of Exile. This too is Path of Exile. Yep, you guessed it. This is also Path of Exile. And this is my cat Jinx. Isn't she cute? This game is actually insane. In-depth character building? Check. Hundreds of skills to choose from? Check. Thousands of unique items? Check. Engaging endgame content? Check. An actual trade economy that is probably the closest thing to a real-world economy in a game? Check. PhD level crafting? Check. Tedious and annoying inventory management? Check. Shitty trade system gated behind a small paywall? Check. Constant nerfs? Check. Wait a minute, what's going on here? This is supposed to be a fun video. Oh yeah, right. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Path of Exile is a huge Mungus game, so let me start from the beginning. The first challenge you'll face is this absolute mess of a screen. Now, you being the proud gamer that you are will feel compelled to tick all of these boxes, but this is an absolute noob trap that Mr. Chris Marks a Lot Wilson has laid out for you. Do not fall for it. Instead, pick this one here so you can join me and thousands of others in our complete dissatisfaction with the state of trading. Choose your preferred flavor of local crackhead as your class and begin your adventure. You wake up on the beach, press the shiny skip tutorial button cause you're a real gamer, you don't need none of that shit, kill some local corpses, run circles around this guy, and quickly realize what the hell you're getting yourself into. <coughs> don't worry though, there are no wrong answers as to how you build your characters, because no matter what you do, your first character is absolutely going to suck. The best advice I have for you is to get a life. <laughs> Sorry, I, I meant get life. Yeah, totally meant that. Definitely not get a life. That would be so rude of me. I mean, come on, we just met. I wouldn't. After talking to locals that are only slightly less crazy than those you're going to be spending hours killing, you can really get started on your quest to kill each and every worship god in Rayclast. Yeah, you're not exactly a good guy here. I'm the bad guy. As you progress through the campaign, you'll gain access to all kinds of new skills that come in the form of gems. For the lore nuts out there, you may find it fun to know that initially, these gems will be implanted inside of people's bodies in order to gain access to their superpowers. Wow, so metal. But modern technology has found way around that. Just place these gems in the sockets in your gear and voila, you can use these skills for yourselves, cause lore. At this point, you'll probably be thinking something along the lines of, oh my god, there are so many different builds I can play, this is awesome! Let me stop you right there though. There are really only two builds in Path of Exile, Righteous Fire and Not Righteous Fire. Why would you willingly put yourself through the pain of having to press buttons while playing resulting in decades of wrist pain when you could just be this guy and feel no pain at all? Honestly though, the build variety in this game is actually completely insane, and anyone who tells you otherwise is probably incapable of ever experiencing joy and is hoping to find their life's purpose in a video game. You can go melee, you can go spells, you can go bows, you can go minions, you can go totems, you can go traps, you can go mines, you can go crafts and crit, you can go whatever this is. Look, anything you can think of is probably possible, it may not be any good, but there are so many different combinations of skills, skill trees, ascendancies, and items that you can do anything you want, sweetie. And that is a fact. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, the campaign. During the 10-ish hour long campaign, look, I know your favorite streamer does it in 3, I just don't have time to play 26 hours a day like them, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. During the 12-ish hour long campaign, you'll meet all kinds of crazy people, get lost in the Val runes, kill this outdated boss, fight the crazy lady, kill her, kill him, find her and fight her again, she becomes your friend, kill her for real this time, and then kill him, this statue, a crab, and then get lost in the other Val place. Look, if you're in a Val area, you're gonna be lost, that's just how it goes. Then you kill a spider, some more statues, sexy this time though, this abomination, and finally, the final boss of the campaign, Kitava. Again. Congratulations, you have completed the tutorial. Yeah, if you quit at this point, you're pretty much missing out on like 99% of the fun. Welcome to the endgame, aka maps. Maps are these items that you'll find while killing monsters that you can place in your map device to open up portals to a new zone where your objective is to go and kill a whole bunch of monsters on your way to the boss, kill the boss, and then hopefully find another map while you're in there. They come in different tiers which increase in difficulty, culminating in some really epic boss fights completely separate from the campaign. For every map you complete for the first time, you get a point to put in your Atlas passive tree, cause yes, one passive tree was not enough. Ha, <laughs> so Path of Exile. This allows you to customize your endgame experience in whatever way you see fit. Do you like Legion? Focus on these. Like tower defense? Get some blight notes. Love crafting grab the harvest notes. Have no idea what I'm talking about? No problem, there's a note for that too. You can do whatever the heck you want and really this is what makes Path of Exile's endgame shine. Well, that plus the incredible feeling power you get when you're playing an absolute giga chat build. Although admittedly it does take a while to get to that point, especially if you have no idea what you're doing, which like I'm assuming is probably most of you. The good news is that the game does a good job of teaching you how all of these systems work and there's an excellent in-game guide that answers all your questions so you'll never have to look anything up on the... Uh, uh, wait what? <laughs> I think I got mixed up with another game. 
Oops, <laughs> my bad. Path of Exile actually tells you nothing and the in-game guide is complete trash. You'll have to look everything up on the correct wiki and probably follow a build guide if you want to have a smooth first experience, and even then it might not be enough. Thankfully there are dozens of us nerds, <laughs> community members, who put together guides and make third party tools that help make things a little bit less daunting. Although at the same time having to look up guides and tools can be daunting in itself, so uh, yeah. On the one hand, it's pretty awesome that there are players willing to put their time to help make the game more enjoyable for others and easier to get into, but on the other hand, that has led to things like this happening. And it's worth noting we do have an API, so if the public want to take the API and implement it better than us or faster than us, they're welcome to do so. Now out of context, that doesn't sound so bad, but trust me, if you know, you know. Moving on, let's talk about those bosses I mentioned earlier. Eventually, if you put up with Path of Exile's ridiculous learning curve long enough, you'll reach some absolutely wild bosses. The first two bosses you'll likely encounter are these guys, which are, um, interesting. And then you'll meet their bosses, these guys, which also have really interesting fights. Now you'll probably meet this woman next, and she's actually kind of interesting. Finally, there's these guys which lead to this guy, and then these guys that lead to this guy, and then these guys that lead to this guy, and then there's the one where you fight these two guys at the same time called Uber Elder, and then you know what? Players said bosses weren't challenging enough, so GGG said fuck it, Uber Uber Elder. Listen, there are plenty of fun bosses to fight in Path of Exile, so if that's your thing, awesome. Just know that it'll take you hundreds of hours to get to them probably, and most of them aren't worth doing unless you specialize your atlas tree for them and literally spend hours just farming the same boss over and over. All thanks to the economy. Speaking of the economy, holy shit dude, I know someone in the comments is going to tell me I'm wrong and point out some obscure game nobody has heard of, but man, this is probably the closest thing to a real world economy in a video game. Look, here's a site that keeps track of the value of all kinds of items in real time with graphs and links and percentage increases and all that good stuff that comes with money related things. Look, I'm no economist, I literally know nothing about real world economies, but I do know a thing or two about Path of Exiles. This is a Chaos Orb. You will find several of these on your Path of Exile journey. If you read the description, which nobody does anymore by the way, I blame TikTok, you'll see that it reforges a rare item with new random properties. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, if you have a rare item like, say, this crappy belt, you can use a Chaos Orb on it and it will randomly change the stats that it has to something also crappy. Cool, right? Well, you'll probably never really want to use it in this way. Instead, a Chaos Orb is used like this. Yeah. Chaos Orbs are dollars. 200 or so Chaos Orbs equals a Divine, which is big money. Every single freaking item you find that has any value can be traded for some currency which can then be traded for either Chaos Orbs or Divines. All the other currency items have some sort of useful function too, but the reality is that the most valuable ones are only worth using for the players that really know how to take advantage of the complex crafting system the game has in place. That said, these orbs and basically anything cool you find still has value to you, because if you hit a progression wall at any point post-campaign, the easiest way to solve your problem is to trade for gear upgrades. Trading in Path of Exile is a hot topic. I won't get too much into it, but it's crazy to me that trade is still in its current state in 2023. To put it simply, to sell something, you need to buy a premium stash tab which costs a few real dollars. GGG does need to make money, so it's fine, whatever. Then you have to put whatever you want to sell into that tab, give it a price, and hope that someone wants to buy it. If someone does want to buy it, they'll send you a message in game which you'll ignore because you're in the middle of a boss fight or something. If you happen to not be busy, you can invite them to your party, they come to your hideout, and then you trade with them. If you want to buy something, you have to look it up on the official Path of Exile trade website and send messages to dozens of players until one of them finally responds. Yeah, you have to be online to trade anything. Isn't that wild? It's freaking 2023. Auction houses have existed in games for decades now, but no, we can't have that in our old school ARPG. Let this sink in. Trading is meant to not be enjoyable. They do not want you to like trading. They want you to be miserable while trading. Let me tell you, they have succeeded. And that's why outside tools and organizations like the TFT Discord exist. No, not that TFT. Which I won't say anything about because I don't really have anything good to say about it and boy would it suck if I happened to get banned from it for saying something along the lines of, wow, some of the people behind TFT sure have fragile egos, huh? Oh shit. Regardless, eventually if you get addicted to this game like me, you'll reach a point where the only thing you care about is how many devices per hour you're making so that you can get filthy rich and play crazy builds that are super expensive. It's also usually somewhere around this point at about 100 hours of playtime into a league that an insidious and depressing thought slowly creeps into my head. Am I actually having fun? 
The answer for me is usually, nah, not really. I'm just hopelessly addicted to the dopamine hit I get whenever something big drops, and that's what keeps me going. Now, the sensible thing to do here would be to stop playing altogether and spend my time doing something I actually enjoy, but uh, what can I say? Love makes you do crazy things sometimes. Look, I know this hasn't been the most convincing video in terms of making you want to play Path of Exile. In fact, you might even think I don't want you to play at all, but you know what? The reality is this. I don't really care. You do you, man. I'm just going over how I perceive this amazing but definitely flawed game, and you can totally decide for yourself. I could talk about Path of Exile for hours, but I think I went over enough for one video. If you want more though and want to help a guy out, click this button right here. Yeah, just like that. If somehow after watching all of this you're still interested in playing Path of Exile, welcome to the club. I've got Tears of Despair, this is a buff, and oops I did it again. What'll it be? Also, do yourself a favor and watch my beginner's guide.